Good afternoon, BNI Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. Uh, today is a special webinar specifically for all of the leadership teams here in the BNI Massachusetts Boston region. Um, I myself am in the Rhode Island region, just a couple of a uh, couple of miles down the road. Uh, Patty Salvucci and the regional team asked me to get together with you guys today to go over a couple of things uh, specifically in BNI Connect and that is going to be how do we enter applications as a secretary treasurer, how do we enter the applications for new members as they apply to join the chapter and also just a few weeks ago um, BNI Connect released the ability for a member to do their own online renewal directly through BNI Connect. So we're going to be going through that process as well. And there is a approval process that happens uh, from the leadership team also. So we're going to be hitting on all of those things today. A uh, couple of uh, housekeeping things as we're going through this before we get started. Uh, the first of which is that this is a live webinar. So if you have any questions at all as we're going through the process today, please do feel free to raise those questions. Uh, the best way to do that is by clicking on the questions panel here in the webinar software. Um, you can raise a question that way and I will be happy to answer it. I'll see it pop up on the screen. I do see uh, Mark Carlsberg checking in, so nice to have you here. This webinar is also being recorded, um, so if you need to review it later or for people that weren't able to make it today, we will be sharing the recording of this video. Um, I will share that with uh, Patty and Paula and everybody else in the regional office, and they can distribute that link out as necessary. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to uh, go over with you guys today is how do we input an application into BNI Connect? Now I'm going to be using the test system today because I don't want to mess up anybody's region. Uh, I'm, going to I'm going to sign in as my secretary treasurer up in the uh, Antarctica region in BNI Connect. So my secretary treasurer up there is Art Garfunkel. And I'm going to log in here. So this is the typical screen that we see uh, when we first log into BNI Connect. I can see that I'm in the Burr chapter up in my Shiver region. And let's say that we have now received an application uh, for a new member in the chapter. And we need to go ahead and input that application. Now, one of the benefits and one of the reasons that more and more areas are moving to having the secretary treasurer enter the applications, the most important region, reason is that it helps to get the member access into BNI Connect right away. Um, and that way, they don't have to wait for the application to get all the way up to the regional office, which can sometimes take days. It can sometimes take uh, a week or more, and we can then start entering them on the POMS reports and they can be assigned a mentor and they can um, also log into BNI Connect right away, especially to start passing online slips. So the place to do this in BNI Connect is going to be under the operations menu. Now a lot of people come to me and say, oh, you know, I don't know where to find anything in BNI Connect. Well, here's my little trick for remembering where to find and where to do stuff in BNI Connect. You'll see along the top we have these various menus. We have Network, Operations, Reports, Tools, and Admin. The Network menu is going to be where all of the networking components are, so all of the really the social media aspects of BNI Connect. So that's where we're going to go and use the discussion groups and the connections if we want to manage our connections or connect with people around the world. Uh, testimonials are also going to be under there. Operations and reports are where we're going to go a little deeper into the system. Operations is where we go to do stuff in BNI Connect. It's where we do a lot of the day-to-day -day activities such as managing the speaker rotation, entering POMS reports. It's also where we're going to go to enter an application. Reports is always going to be output only. So we can't input anything in reports. It's only to get the statistics and the data back out of BNI Connect. So if we want to input an application, what we're going to do is go to Operations, Chapter. Now under here we have all of the different menu items on the left-hand side with the sub-menu items on the right-hand side. 
Entering an application is going to be under Manage Memberships. So we click on Manage Memberships and we'll see a couple of different options here. Manage Members will take us into an interface that allows us to search the membership of our chapters. Enter New Application is going to be where we go to, obviously, enter a new application. Once applications have been entered, we will then see them in the pending applications until the regional office has uh, fully processed that application. So if I want to enter a new person, you have that application in hand, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Enter New Application link. Now the first step of entering an application into BNI Connect is a search process. And this is probably one of the most important things that we can do when we're entering applications. The reason that there's a search process is that in BNI Connect, every, every person that has ever been a member in the, in the system or been a director consultant or an admin or part of BNI in any way will have an existing user account basically a username and a password and an email address and all of the things that make up a person's account. What we want to do is make sure that we're searching against all of the previous users to see if they exist in the system already. This will mean that the, it will reactivate their previous user account, so they don't have to create a new email address or, or a new login for BNI. It'll also make sure that it scoops up all their old information. So if they were, let's say, a member of another chapter before, this will make sure that their length of membership is correct. It'll also make sure that they have access to all their previous POMS data as part of the personal participation report. So I want to make sure I do a search here. Now, I'm just going to put in a pretty generic name here. Uh, let's say that it was John Smith that's applying to the chapter. A lot of times I do choose email address unknown because email addresses do change frequently. And I can click search. Now, this is going to search the entire BNI database and look for anybody named John Smith. And you can see here that we have John Smith from Tahitian, uh, Nani, and Wolf Plumbing, and there's a whole bunch of John Smiths here in the system. We even see one that's already a member, so we can't do anything with him. But if you find the person that matches what you're looking for, the thing that we would do is click on the little red head here over on the right-hand side. And what this will do is convert this previous person back into a member. The nice thing about this is that it will have all of the information for this member already filled out, so it's actually a little bit less paperwork to do. Of course, if this isn't the right person, let's say you pull this up and you realize that they're from um, you know, Uruguay instead of Massachusetts where they said they were from, you can always back out at this point as well. John Smith isn't the actual person we're putting in. I'm going to be putting in somebody named Flora Florist. And let's see if we have any matches here. And there's no matches. If there's no matches, what we're going to do is go on to the next step. And the next step is to also search the visitor database. So if you had somebody that visited your chapter, this will search against all of your visitors that you've entered. If I click Search Visitor, I can see that we do have a flora florist that visited the chapter on June 11th with that profession and the company. Now, if this is the right person, we're going to make sure we do the same thing. We're going to click this little red head on the right-hand side, and what that will do is convert this visitor into a member. Now, that's really helpful because what it does is it takes this person out of the visitors database at that point. That means that if we're doing things like email campaigns to past visitors or things like that, this person will no longer get any of those follow-up emails. Again, I can just click the little red head. And the nice thing, again, is going to be that the person, all of the information, the, the address details and things like that are already filled out for that person. Now, if there's no matches or if that's not the right person, you can go ahead and click the button that says Enter New Member. From here, this is a simple matter of filling out the form. 
So the application date is going to be the application date that was listed on the application, which is technically when they first started attending meetings, even if they came as a visitor a couple of times. Let's say this person, the application date was November 7th. We can then verify the country and the region. I'm going to make sure that I select the Burr chapter here, where this person is applying to. Their profession and specialty, they have the big long list of professions. Say this person is insurance, and their specialty is property and casualty. You can then select who the sponsor is. Uh, the sponsor, this is drop down, is going to be all of the active members of your current chapter. So let's say this person, uh, Ricky Martin, was the sponsor. Now, if it is a cross-chapter sponsor, let's say it's somebody that recommended this uh, from another chapter, you can choose the worldwide search and search for somebody else that was the sponsoring member. If it was somebody from, let's say, the regional office, you can also choose uh, BNI website as the sponsor, or you can even choose no sponsor. But again, Ricky Martin is the person that sponsored this person. I'm going to go ahead and now fill out the rest of the information. So this person is going to be uh, Isabel Kutu from Nationwide Insurance. The product service description is going to be what they wrote as the product service description on their application. So this is important to put in there because um, a lot of times what they have listed or what they've written out isn't necessarily going to match exactly with a profession and specialty from the drop down or an industry and classification. So it's important to put in here what they wrote down on the physical application. The VAT reference number, VAT stands for Value Added Tax, and Value Added Tax is something that other countries use. It's kind of like our tax ID number here in the United States. Um, in other countries, they are required to store this on their profile. Here in the United States, we can safely ignore this. Uh, Stephanie has a question. She said, is this functionality already live on the website? I'm trying to follow along on my own BNI Connect, and it doesn't appear to have all these options. Uh, so that's a question for uh, Patty and Paula um, or Patrice or anybody that might be uh, from the regional office on the webinar. Have you guys already activated this, or, or will you be activating this on a certain date? So while they're typing a response to that, I'm going to continue on. The address is uh, pretty straightforward, just the address. Uh, Patty says, we will be activating it right after this webinar. All right, and whatever the state is and the country, phone number. Uh, you can also use periods as delimiters. Uh, basically, anything except spaces uh, will be acceptable. And finally, the email address. Now, it's important to enter an email address here, and that is correct. The email address will, having that in there, will automatically send them the invitation to log in to BNI Connect as soon as you enter this application. Now, the next couple of options, uh, show me on the BNI public website and allow people to email me, those are defaulted to yes. That way they will appear on the chapter website, the regional website, right away. And finally, the payment method. So choose whether it's cash or check or whatever the payment method might be, and whether it is a one-year or a two-year membership. At that point, we click Submit. 
and this person has now been entered into BNI Connect. So that application is now pending. They've been sent the thank you for joining BNI email. They've also been sent the um, please register for a user account on BNI Connect. If they were a previous member, then it will also at this point activate their previous uh, username and password. Uh, Don says, who is authorized to do this? The membership, the VP, uh, which positions? Um, I believe this will be authorized for just the secretary treasurers, um, but Patty or Patrice or Paula, if you would like to uh, confirm or clarify that, please. All right, at this point, you're brought back to the screen if you need to enter another application right away, um, especially maybe after a successful visitor's day, you can go through and enter all of the applications one after the other. After that, I'm going to go back to the operations menu. And if I'd like to see the pending applications, I can go to manage memberships and click on view pending applications. And from here, I'll see all of the applications that are currently in queue. So I can see there's an application, a renewal application pending right now for um, my buddy Alfred E. Newman up in Antarctica, as well as the one that I just entered for Isabel Kutu. If I need to review the application, I can click the application type button, and this would show me all of the details of that application that was input. Um, so Josephine says, can VPs also have this access? Uh, Karen has responded. She says, uh, I will have to check on who will be able to enter applications. Um, there's a current discussion as to whether or not VPs will also have access to this in case the secretary treasurers are not available. Um, so again, more details on that to follow. All right, so that is the application entry process in BNI Connect. Um, do we have any questions on entering the applications? It's a pretty straightforward uh, fill out a form. Again, the thing that you need to really, really be conscious of is the searching for previous members. Um, that will ease a, a lot of trouble and make people happy when you can recover their previous accounts. Now, there is one more way to enter an application in BNI Connect that I'd like to show you, and that is if you are sure that somebody had visited, so somebody had come to visit, and then they input an application maybe a week or two later, you can actually directly convert a visitor and start the application process right from the visitor record. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Again, I'm going to go back to the operations menu, and I'm going to go to the manage visitor option. Now if I do a search for visitors, I can choose any time frame I'd like to here. And I can see all the visitors that have been registered that have visited my chapter recently. Now let's say it was Flora Florist here that was submitting an application. She finally decided to join the chapter. I can click on this icon that has the little arrow in it, Convert to Member. You can see it shows up Convert to Member when I hover over it. If I click this button, it will also start the application process, and I can continue along with the application the same way I would have before. The nice thing about converting a visitor, again, it takes it out of the visitor database, and it also um, has most of the information filled out from when the visitor record was input into the system. And of course now if I do a search, Flora Florist will no longer appear here in my visitor database because she has now been converted into a member. All right, so again that is the application entry process. Do we have any questions at all about entering an application?
So um, Patrice says it uh, could be a regional thing, but when we enter the application date, it must be the date that the app is filled out. Um, that is correct. Because I'm in Antarctica right now, uh, there are just a couple of little settings differences. You will not see induction date uh, when you do this in the United States. Um, it's simply because we're in the Antarctica region right now in my test region. So you only have the choice of entering application date. Uh, Tom says, do we still send the paper application into Sudbury? And yes, you still want to follow the process even after you've entered it of getting that paper application. And a lot of times you're going to have payment at that point as well, such as a check that was turned in. You definitely want to get that information up to the regional office as soon as possible. Um, if Patrice or Patty or anybody would like to elaborate on that process, um, I'd be happy to relay that information as well. Um, but that part of it, getting the app up to, to the regional office, does stay the same. Excellent question, Tom. All right, and Patty has confirmed that. So, yes, absolutely, you want to send that up to the regional office. All right, any additional questions on entering applications? I'd be happy to answer those questions. All right, if not, what I'd like to do is to move on to the, oh, hold on, we have one. Uh, let's see, Dawn says, uh, was this sent to all BNI members? There are two of our membership committee members registered for this, but our VP and secretary treasurer aren't. Um, just wondering why we're being shown something we can't do. Um, so this particular part of the process, um, again, is going to be just for the VPs and secretary treasurers, but this next process that I'm about to show you, which is the online renewals, um, as a membership committee person, um, you're going to need to know this, as well as um, just as any members, you'll also be able to renew online as well. So. Hopefully that, that helps, that makes sense. All right, so let's, let's move on to the online renewals um, and how the online renewals works in BNI Connect. So let me just uh, pull up this quick PowerPoint just to show you a couple of things real quick. All right, so again, we're going to talk about the online renewals, and this is something that was, uh, again, just released. It's brand new in BNI Connect a couple of weeks ago, but what this does is this allows us to process our own renewals online uh, and also to process the payments as we're doing the renewals. Now, here's how the renewal process works. Uh, there's three stages to it. Uh, a member can complete a renewal application. All renewals must also be reviewed and approved online through BNI Connect. So this is a new process for leadership teams and membership committees. Um, rather than having to review the paper renewal, you have that ability to review things online in BNI Connect. And then finally, the renewal is reconciled up at the regional office, and that part um, happens the same. But let's see, there are four different ways in which, as a member, you can go in and start the renewal process for yourself in BNI Connect. So the first way is that when you get the renewal reminder, all members get a renewal reminder 60 days before they're due for renewal. When you get that reminder, there's a link in there that says Renew Now. And you can click that link, and that will start the renewal process online. Um, just so you can see it, this is basically what that renewal email looks like. Obviously, the information is filled out. But you can see here, there's a link that says to renew online now. Please click here. You will be asked to log in to BNI Connect, and then it will start the renewal application process. So and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. The second way is that on your regional website, there will be a link that says Renew Now or Renew Online. 
Clicking that link on the regional website will also start the renewal process. The third way is that there will now be a Renew Now link on the home screen for all users. And there's also a Renew Now button on the main profile tab. So let's take a look at all of those different things. Again, you've already seen the email. And this is what the email looks like. And after I'm logged in as a member, you can also see there's a Renew Now button up here in the upper right-hand side. And if I go into my profile, click on Update Profile My BNI page, or I go to Options, then I can see right here there's a Renew button right next to where it says the Membership Status. So any of those links or places, if I click on them, will all go to the same place and it will start this renewal process. I would choose whether I'm going to be applying for a one-year or a two-year, and then I'm going to answer the questions. Now the questions, this again, I'm, I'm applying up here in Antarctica, so the questions are slightly different, but the questions um, need to be answered. A member does have the ability then to review the information about their membership. And finally, they need to agree to the terms and conditions and proceed to payment. If I missed any of the questions, I will be asked to go back and review those questions. I can then go and choose my payment type. Up here in Antarctica, we only accept cash. Make sure I follow the instructions, and I can submit this payment. So at this point, my Renew Now button disappears, and as a membership committee, as a leadership team, this will now need to be reviewed and approved before the renewal is then processed. So that's the member side of things. Oh, we do have a question from uh, uh, Dick Bennett. He says, would it be possible to email the PowerPoint presentation uh, to the Secretary Treasurers? Uh, here's what I'll do, Dick, is I will send the PowerPoint presentation up to your regional office. So I'll send that to Patty and the crew. Um, they may want to make some slight modifications to it to make sure that it's in line with your processes before then forwarding it on to the Secretary Treasurers. So would that help, Dick? And Patty, are you okay with that? All right, so I also have help documents um, that uh, Patty and the crew have access to that they can forward on as well that detail a step-by-step -step walkthrough of all of these things as well. All right, so now that the application is submitted, we do need to approve that application and review it as a leadership team and membership committee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out here as Art Garfunkel, and what I need to do is I need to log in as somebody from the membership committee of the chapter. So I have a member, Mike Jones, who's on the membership committee. His login is Bardo. And as a membership committee member, what I'm going to need to do is to review this application. So the place that I'm going to do that is by going to the pending applications. So I go to Operations, Chapter, and the same place, Manage Memberships, and View Pending Applications. And here I'll see all of the pending applications for the region. And here I'll see that we have a couple of renewal applications that were submitted online. These need to be reviewed. So this one for Art Garfunkel that was just submitted, it was submitted on 11.19. I can click on the Approve link here. Now as the membership committee, what I'll see is I will see the person's application, so I could click on the link here if I'd like to review the application. 
I can then open up the PDF file. I can see how they answered all of their questions. I can then see their last six months of history. So I'm going to review their six months historical report here. I can also click on the training details. This will open up a new window. And I can see that Art Garfunkel never attended any training, so I might want to take this into consideration before I uh, pass along my uh, acceptance of this person to the leadership team. While I'm here, I can also review the rest of their profile. I can see that he really hasn't taken the time to fill out his um, various profile forms or his gains profile or anything. He hasn't gotten any testimonials. He's not really participating in any groups here in BNI Connect. So I can take all of these things into consideration. When I'm done viewing this, I can close this particular tab and be brought back to the renewal approval. At this point, you do need to let your vice president know, um, either via email or at a chapter meeting, um, however you'd like to do that, whether or not you are going to approve or decline this person's approval. Just uh, one thing to note, there are no voting buttons in BNI Connect um, for legal reasons. Uh, we're keeping that process as an offline process. So that conversation does need to happen in person with your leadership team. So let's say now that I need to, I'm the vice president of the chapter, and I need to go ahead and approve this. Let me sign out as the membership committee person, and I am going to log in as my chapter vice president. Now my chapter vice president is Albert Camus. So let me um, log in as uh, Mr. Camus here. And again, I'm going to go to the same place. I'm going to go to operations. Manage memberships and view pending applications. I'm going to take a look at Art Garfunkel here. Now, as the vice president, I have a couple of more options here at the bottom. I can go in and approve or decline this person's renewal. Before I can make a decision, I do have to certify that I have gone through all of the necessary reviews. I've talked to my membership committee and reviewed this person's application. You can also put a flag that this was a conditional approval. All this does is mark it on the record that it was a conditional approval. Uh, what your terms of probation are, what your terms of um, working with this member um, as a con conditional approval are up to you as a uh, region. Uh, this is just to mark it in the system that it was conditional. And as part of a conditional, whether or not control letters were sent to this member. Now this one's going to be an unconditional approval, so I'm going to go ahead and just certify that I have reviewed, and I'm going to go ahead and click Approve. And now this person is approved. I can then go back if I'd like to, or go back to my home screen, and go on to my next tasks. So that's the approval process when a member has submitted the application. Now there's another process where you can actually pre-approve a member for renewal before they've gone in and renewed. And that would be at, for example, the 90-day review mark. Oh, hold on. Before I do that, let, I do have a couple of questions here. Uh, Nancy had an unrelated question. I'll get to that at the end. Um, Chris says, do we need to send letters or make sure things are documented before we can select conditional approval? Um, as far as uh, documentation and conditional approval goes, uh, that process I'm going to leave up to you and your region as far as the necessary steps. Best person to talk to with that is your director consultant. Um, again, there isn't a formal process in BNI Connect for handling that uh, because the process is so different from region to region to region. So definitely check with Patty, check with your director consultant um, for the exact process of conditional approvals.
Does that make sense, Chris? All right, Tammy says, uh, if members pay by credit card, are they charged at the time they fill out the renewal form or once membership committee signs off? So if they are paying by credit card, that is processed right at that time that they're entering the application. So it actually hits the credit card at the time that they submit the, the application and payment. So if for some reason they are declined, then a refund does need to be made by the regional office. Does that answer your question, Tammy? Uh, one other note about declines. So if you do decide to decline a member, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go, go back to operations chapter and go to uh, manage memberships and view pending applications. Now, let's say that I have Alfred E. Newman here, who I haven't approved or declined yet. But Alfred's been, you know, real jokester. Don't really uh, want to renew him in my chapter. I can go into the approval screen. And let's say that I choose to decline this member. What this does is it marks it on the record that he's declined. It, I want to be very clear in saying it does not kick the person out of the chapter. All this does is mark it in the system that the renewal was declined. At this point, you still need to have a conversation with the member, letting them know that they've been declined, and the person will need to be dropped from the system uh, when either when they choose to leave the chapter or when the membership has expired. It does not automatically notify them. Um, it does, however, notify the director consultant and the regional office, as well as the rest of your membership committee, that the renewal has been declined, but it does not notify the member. So that is a process that does need to be handled in person with the member that has been declined. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? All right, so as I was saying before, you do have a way to get ahead of this process as well as a membership committee and as a leadership team, and that is that you can pre-approve a member before they've submitted an application. Now, this is usually done when you get the 90-day reminder email. So 90 days before a renewal takes place, you should get an email reminder saying, by the way, these people are due for renewal in 90 days, and it will have a list of all of the me members that are up for renewal in 90 days. In that email, you will see a link that will bring you to the pre-approval screen. The other way to get to the pre-approval screen is through the membership dues report. That report is going to be located at reports, chapter, and the membership dues report. And what we'll see here is that for all of our members that are not already pending a renewal, like Alfred e. Newman and Art Garfunkel, they've already got renewals pending. But for the rest of our members, we can pre-approve them. So for those members that are up in, let's say, 60 or 90 days, let's say that we've reviewed Harvey Keitel. We've decided that we would like to pre-approve him so that he can complete the renewal process and stay an active member in the chapter. Um, we can register his pre-approval. And in this case, Harvey has already been pre-approved. But let's say uh, Robert Lovejoy down here. Even though he is not due until 6-1-2017, um, let's say that um, he would like to renew early to, let's say, take advantage of the lower price. We can also go ahead and pre-approve him at this time. 
pre-approving somebody will notify that member saying you have been pre-approved would you like to submit your renewal application now and they could then start the renewal process at that point all right so let's just to review these things again the renewal pr approvals all Online renewals must be approved or pre-approved in BNI Connect, and they can be full, conditional, or they can be declined as well. So there's two ways to do that as a pre-approval, either through the renewal reminder email or when you click on the renewal link in the membership dues report. If a member has already submitted their application, there's also two ways that you can access that. You will be notified if they've submitted an application, and you can click on the um, approval link in that notification email, or you can go to the View Pending Applications screen. And again, this is just another view of the process. All right. so. That is the application process and the online renewals process. What I'd like to do is to open this up to questions. What questions do you guys have about any part of this process? Or um, while you have me, um, anything else in BNI Connect that I might be able to answer your questions on or help you with? And Patty or Paula or Patrice, if there's anything else that um, I might have missed or that you'd like me to cover, please uh, let me know. Uh, Matt says, great information, thank you. Uh, Tammy says, will the online renewal process replace the paper process, or is it in addition to? Um, the online renewal process was specifically designed and is being rolled out to make sure that we have a PCI compliant process where members can enter a renewal and enter their own credit card information. Um, I don't believe it will immediately replace the paper process. Um, I don't know if the region has plans to um, have it fully replace the paper process, but I'm sure um, right now it is going to complement the process. So if uh, Patty or Paula or Patrice or anybody would like to elaborate on that. Um, Stephen says, just to be clear, there are two steps for renewals. One, any member of the membership committee, after consulting the rest of the membership committee, logs on and approves, or then uh, two, the VP does the same. So um, the process for renewals, the membership committee, you only have access to review the approvals, so or review the applications. So when you go in, you will only see the application, and you'll see the uh, six-month details of their membership. You can also see their training details, but as a membership committee, you will not have the actual button that says approve or decline. That's for you to look at the membership, review it, you know, formulate your opinion. At that point, you then need to communicate your opinion to the vice president. Only the vice president would actually have the button on it that says approve or decline. So th does that clarify, Stephen? But it's the same process to get to, uh, to get to that approval screen. It's just whether or not the buttons show up. Uh, Patty did clarify, we will accept both paper and online applications at this time. Um, online is not replacing the paper totally, at least not at this time. Um, Patty says, uh, a best practice might be for the secretary, treasurer, the VP to have an iPad or laptop to input the credit cards along with applications. So. If you are with the member, um, 
You can input the credit card at the time of the application. Um, however, it is not PCI compliant to write down this information or otherwise transport the information um, unless you are there with the member and they are inputting the credit card information. But if you choose, uh, for example, during the, I'm not going to be able to do this in Antarctica, so let me um, switch to another region here. I'm going to have to log out and log into BNI Connect. But let's say that I'm going to uh, enter a new member. Let me go ahead and do this in the United States and in Boston. Hey, Brookline Networkers, would you guys like a new member today? Say I enter a new member, and I do a search. He's not there. Let me search the visitors. Uh, not a visitor, so when I go to enter a new member, and I can fill out the various information. I'm not going to complete it, so I'm just putting in some junk information for now. But it, I can do an online card payment. If I am with the member, and once I submit this, this would open up a payment window where you could then hand over the iPad or have the member type in all of their information. So if I submit this, again, this will then redirect me. to the Pay Now screen where you can enter the credit card information. I'm going to have to make sure I remember to uh, void that application. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Other questions? Yeah, if it's the online renewal process, then the members are actually entering, in, entering the information themselves. That would just be for a new application at that point. And let me uh, void this application here. All right. What other questions? Um, let's see, Patty says, we will send out a follow-up email with the link for all vice presidents, membership committees, secretary treasurers with the link for the webinar, as well as the unanswered questions. I want to make sure that the office staff and everybody are all on the same page. And they will decide also on whether or not VPs will have the ability to enter the information as well. All right, if there's no additional questions, I will, uh, let's see. Uh, Nancy has a question. Um, Nancy says, is there one report that helps us to fill out all of the details needed on the new BNI meeting goals boards? So I'm not familiar with the, the goals boards that you're using at the meeting. Um, I do know that there is a goals process in BNI Connect um, that tracks goals along the way. But that might be a conversation for a different day. I do have recordings done on that particular uh, goals process in BNI Connect. By the way, if you are looking uh, for more information, you can always head to our support site. Um, if you go to the question mark here in the upper right-hand corner, that will take you over to the support site. On the support site, we have a ton of documentation for all of these various processes. We also have recorded webinars where you will see, for example, we have a um, goals for leadership teams. Oh, where is it? So actually, it's this first one right here from October 6th. That goes through the goals process here in BNI Connect. So that might 
might help, but you guys might have your own process as well for doing goals. Uh, Cynthia says, is there a button for automatically filling in the contact info on the credit card page? And unfortunately, no, there is not. The credit card processing actually happens on the credit card processor's website for security reasons. So there's no way to draw that information from BNI Connect and put it in there um, because that would basically be a security violation. So um, regional office, you may want to follow up with uh, Josephine as well, uh, who is having issues with the goals reports. So with Nancy and Josephine. Okay. Um, Josephine and Nancy, uh, Patty says someone from the office will be following up with you regarding the goals boards. And Nancy and Josephine say, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Any, any final questions? All right. By the way, a good referral for me is if you found this format helpful, uh, we do hold a full series of um, webinars on, on BNI Connect, going through the whole process of BNI Connect on how to fill out your profile and online slips and the connections and the social media and the member tools and reports and maintaining your website on a monthly basis. So please do a good referral for me is to let your other chapter members know about these webinars. Our very next webinar is going to be tomorrow, November 20th. We're going to be going over the social media aspects of BNI Connect. That one is only a half hour webinar. It will be at 3 p.m. Eastern and then followed up on Friday. We're going to go deeper into some of the other member tools and reports in the system and that will be at 11 a.m. on Friday. So please do join us for these additional webinars, and we'll have a whole series again in December and January. So thank you guys so much for being here and spending some time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again on a future webinar. Happy connecting, everyone.